Hi everyone, welcome back. One of the most common questions that I see being asked about the top down center outfitting method is, can I use this method to fit an elastic waist pants pattern? The answer is yes, absolutely you can. And this video will walk through how to do that. As a reminder, this is a companion video to the full series about the top down center outfitting method on my channel. So watch the full series first to get all the details on how to use the method then come back and watch this video. I'm only gonna be focusing on the specific decisions and the variations in the method that apply to an elastic waist pattern here. All right, so to get ready for fitting your elastic waist pants pattern, you will largely be following the same advice for using top down center out as you would for a non-elastic waist pattern. So you'll be studying the design intent, choosing a size and then preparing your pattern and your twall exactly the same as you would for any other pattern with top down center out. The difference comes when you are constructing and fitting your waistband. So you have a choice here. If you've chosen an elastic waist pattern, you can either fit your twall using a straight waistband or you can fit it using a separate elastic waistband with a casing. And I'll walk through examples of each and the pros and cons to each but you should choose whichever one works best for you and whichever one you find easiest. I personally like fitting with a straight waistband because I find that it is more stable when I'm fitting and just makes the process a little bit easier, but you should try both if you're not sure and use whichever one you like best. So if you're using a straight waistband to fit your twall, then Think of it as a placeholder. It is establishing a stable location on your torso where you want the final elastic to be. So you'll be pinning your straight waistband to that location and you'll be using whatever circumference you want the final elastic to be. So however tight or loose you want your final elastic waistband to be, that's how tight or loose you'll be pinning your straight waistband. And then as you're fitting, what you'll be doing is gathering up the excess fabric along the waistline and tucking it under your straight waistband and pinning it to secure it. If you're fitting using an elastic waistband, then you will be constructing a full casing for your elastic, including your seam allowance at the bottom. So I've marked my seam allowance along this casing with contrast stitching the same way that I've done for this straight waistband. And the challenge when you're using an elastic waistband with a casing to fit your twall is that the elastic waistband is not gonna be as stable as your straight waistband. So the elastic can stretch, this can move around a little bit on your torso, and the casing can slide around over the elastic, which can make it a little bit challenging to locate your center front and center back on this waistband. So to combat that a little bit, what I have done is I pin a safety pin through the casing and the elastic to mark the center front and the center back of my elastic waistband. And that just helps me have a little bit more of a secure anchor for those two locations so I can be a little bit more certain about where they are on my waistband. And I would recommend that you use a safety pin to mark this location if you want to remove your elastic later. You could also use a line of stitches here, but just know that it'll be much more challenging to actually remove your elastic if you want to use it again. Okay, so once you've prepared your waistband and you've fit it, then you're going to choose a size, prepare the pattern and the twall exactly the same way as you would for any other pattern. So you're going to add your extra fabric along the top and along the sides of your pattern pieces. And then we're going to be fitting. And essentially when we're fitting an elastic waist pattern with top down center out, we are going to be gathering up the excess fabric and then pinning that to the waistband. Let me show you some examples of how to do that. First, I'll show you how I fit an elastic waist pattern using a straight waistband. So here I've got my straight waistband pinned in the location on my body where I want the elastic to be in the final garment. I am stepping into the twall, and I'm really working with the same order of operations, the same workflow as I would with any other pattern. So top down, center out. 
Here, notice though that I'm tucking the twill underneath the waistband, and I'd recommend doing this for your elastic waist patterns. This just helps to manage the excess fabric along the waistline a bit better. Uh, so I prefer this rather than pinning the twill on top of the waistband. Next, I'm just evaluating that center seam. So I've got stay stitching along the crotch seam to indicate the center front and the center back of the twill. And I'm matching that stay stitching up with my center front and center back using my two mirrors. Then I'm pinning in place once I'm satisfied. So no different than any other fitting with top down center out. Next, I'm working from the center out to the side. And here I am gathering the fabric the excess fabric along the waistline, I'm just making sure that those gathers are evenly distributed along the waistline and that waistline seam is positioned where I want it to be to get the fit that I want. And as I'm distributing these gathers around my torso, I'm not worried about pinning every single gather every single inch. I'm really just pinning enough so that the twill is stably attached to the waistband. And when I remove this twill to transfer my adjustments back to the pattern, it's going to be stable. It's not going to move around on me. And that's really it. I could continue on here and adjust the side seam. I didn't feel I needed to with this particular twill, um, but that is how you would fit uh, an elastic waist pattern using a straight waistband. And just to mention here, I would baste these changes uh, and just check that I've got the fit where I want it to without pins. And then I'd go ahead and I'd transfer my adjustments back to the pattern using the same methods that I would for any other pattern. Next, let's look at fitting with an elastic waistband. So here I've got my elastic waistband on and I'm just checking to make sure that the safety pins marking center front and center back are correctly aligned to my center front and center back. And I'm stepping into the twill and I will begin fitting. And the instructions for fitting with an elastic waistband are largely the same as with a straight waistband here. You can see I'm tucking the twill underneath the elastic waistband to fit it. And I'm gonna be evaluating the fit in the crotch seam first, working from top down and center out, just like I would with any other pattern. Notice that this waistband is shifting around a little bit more on me. Uh, that's the challenge when using an elastic waistband. It's just a little bit less stable than a straight waistband. Now notice that I am using safety pins here and I would strongly recommend using safety pins to attach your twill to your waistband if you're using a separate elastic waistband with a casing. And the reason is so that you can get in and out of your elastic waistband without stabbing yourself or without losing pins. So if you can, I would strongly encourage the use of safety pins here. But other than that, there really is not that much different between fitting with a straight waistband and an elastic waistband. I'm still having to distribute the gathers here. I'm pinning as I go to make sure that I've got the excess fabric distributed where I want it around the waistline. And when I'm done, I will uh, baste these changes to the waistband and then I will transfer my changes back to the final pattern. Once you know how to fit an elastic waist pants pattern with top down center out, you can then adapt that process to work for lots of different design variations. So for example, if you are working with a pattern that has a half elastic, so the front half of your waistband is a straight waistband or maybe it's a facing, and the back half of your waistband is elastic with a casing, you could construct a separate half and half hybrid waistband to use when you're fitting your twill. Alternatively, you could still fit these half and half patterns with one full straight waistband. Regardless of which method you choose, you would essentially be splitting your approach to fitting when you're fitting the twill between the front and the back. So along the front, you would be smoothing that waistline of the twill to match with the seam line of the front waistband. And in the back, you'd be gathering the twill along the waistband and tucking it up under the back part of the elastic waistband. So you'd really just be splitting your treatment of the twill waistline between front and back. There's also the possibility that you may be working with a design that has a fold over elastic waistband construction. So not a separate elastic casing, but instead one where you're folding the elastic into the top of the pant pattern. Let me show you how you would handle that with top down center out.
There are different ways you could handle this type of construction with top down center out, but here is one way that I've used in the past. This is the front pattern piece for a pattern that has a fold over elastic construction for the casing. So you can see there's a lot of length here, and that's because part of this top edge gets wrapped around the elastic to make the casing. So the first thing that I'll do is I will find the location on this pattern where the pants meet the bottom edge of the elastic. And this will depend on the height of the elastic that's called for in the pattern and the number of folds needed during construction. For this pattern, the instructions say to attach the elastic along the top edge of the pattern and then we fold once and then we secure the elastic to the pants along the bottom edge here. And I have drawn a line to represent where the bottom edge of that elastic is on this pattern. And that's the line that I'll use for reference when I'm fitting with top down center out. So I will be adding fabric above this line. I'm essentially treating this like the waistline seam on any other pair of pants. So to prepare the toile, I'm gonna add my extra fabric above this and notice this may already be done for you with this particular type of design. This extra fabric for the fold over portion of the casing can be used during your fitting. Just double check that you have the right amount up here for your proportions according to top down center out. Now when I'm fitting this, I will fit this using a straight waistband or a separate elastic waistband with a casing, whichever you prefer. I may decide to add or remove length from this pattern. And if I do, I will mark wherever I want the bottom of the elastic waistband to be on the toile, and then I'll transfer that back to the pattern. Then it's just a matter of adding back however much fabric I need for the fold over construction to that new line. Keep in mind with this type of garment construction, you'll want to add or remove fabric evenly and consistently all around the waistline. You want whatever new waistline seam that you determine when you're fitting to be parallel to this line. And the reason is because you're going to need to fold this top edge over a straight piece of elastic. So you don't want to introduce any angles uh, into the top edge of this fabric. So for example, if I decide during fitting that I wanna add three quarters of an inch at the center front and then taper to nothing at the sides, that's gonna create a peak along the top edge of this garment. And that's going to be very difficult to maintain as I fold this over a straight piece of elastic. So this is just inherent to this type of design and this type of construction. If you find that you need to add or remove fabric unevenly across the top, waistline to get the fit that you want, then you may want to switch to a separate elastic casing for your waistband construction. Otherwise, just keep in mind as you're fitting to add or remove length evenly all along this reference line. And that's it. I find that fitting an elastic waist pattern with top down center out is really not that much different than fitting any other type of pattern with top down center out. It's a matter of understanding how to adapt the method to work with this particular design. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Happy sewing.